for more than 20 years as a museum piece, Mallard returned to steam in 1988, the 50th anniversary of its world record run of 1938. The LNER turned out its first four streaks in three contrasting shades of silver grey to match the purpose-built coaches for its new Silver Jubilee Express. Each was given a silver name. Silver Link, Silver Fox, Quicksilver and Silver King. Sadly, none of the original silver engines survived, but in the late 1980s, Bitten was turned out as Pioneer 2509 Silver Link with single chimney and side valances restored to give a flavour of those early days. Pioneer Silver Link clearly created a stir in September 1935 when it arrived at King's Cross for the first time. Just 25 weeks had separated the order for the locomotive and train and its completion. Silver Link and its lightweight train of matching streamlined coaches worked the London Newcastle Silver Jubilee Monday to Friday for three weeks. Quicksilver, the second day four, wasn't ready until after the third week of running by the new train, so Silver Link had gone straight from the drawing board onto an out and back express run of more than 500 miles a day with no mechanical problems. Although their era was drawing to a close, the A4s were frequently called on to work trains when the new diesels failed. As diesels were phased in, the A4s were increasingly used on secondary passenger trains, as well as fast freight and parcels turns. In the summer of 1963, when these poignant scenes were filmed, the A4s were working their last regular trains over East Coast methods. By spring 1963, Mallard was working its last revenue earning trains and the record breaker was unceremoniously withdrawn on April 24th. However, the historic high speed run by Gresley's fastest streak in 1938 ensured a place first in the Museum of British Transport at Clapham and later at the National Railway Museum, York. Even towards the end of their lives, the records continued to fall before them. In 1959, legendary King's Cross driver Bill Hull on number 6 007 Sir Nigel Gresley worked a special for the Stevenson Locomotive Society. Not once, but three times that day, his train reached 100 miles per hour. And over 25 miles, the average speed was also 100 miles per hour. This was the highest substantiated post-war record for steam traction. The achievement is commemorated on the A4's boiler casing by this plaque, cast in a similar style to the world record plaque carried by Mallard. The A4s each ran around one and a half million miles during their quarter century or so of top link life, and in pre-war days they ran a minimum of 80,000 miles between general repairs at Doncaster. For most of the A4s, it all ended in the scrapyard. 4465 Guillemot, later number 60020, along with 60011 Empire of India, were the only two A4s to be scrapped at Darlington. A total of 13 were sold to scrapmen, and the other 13 were cut up at Doncaster, 14 if you include the bomb-damaged Sir Ralph Wedgwood. By 1964, it seemed like the A4 story was over. But it wasn't. Scotland was beckoning once more, but no longer on the East Coast route, where the glory days were over. The summer timetable of 1964 found 14 survivors back in action between Glasgow and Aberdeen on the three-hour expresses linking the Scottish cities. This was to be the A4's glorious Indian summer. The cabs were the most comfortable ever seen on the LNER. 
whilst it was common overseas, and especially in America, for crews to have seats to see ahead and do their work, this wasn't the case in Britain, where seats were very primitive. Padded bucket seats were a real first. With the pull-out regulator vertically in front of him, and all the other controls within easy reach, the driver is able to concentrate on looking for signals and watching the road ahead. The fireman can't spend too much time on his bucket seat, but an A4 cab gives plenty of room to work, feeding the wide fire grate. 